Our next guests are some uh, powerful, th powerful ministers of the gospel that uh, are reaching the nation of Liberia. And so I want to introduce uh, Bill Ginn and Dr. Jesse Togbadoya. Are you okay with that? I'm okay with that. Got it. <laughs> Bill, how did, uh, how did you get involved? Uh, I, I think we talked before the set. You actually kind of live here in North Atlanta. So how did you get involved in a nation like Liberia? Well, that's a great question <laughs> because I didn't even know where Liberia was when I first met Jesse. Um, in 2004, Jesse... Uh, came to the church that we were we members and as an intern while he was going to seminary at McAfee at Mercer and also getting his uh, MBA there. Mm. Um, and um, I was teaching a, an older Sunday school class, uh, senior uh, singles that Jesse visited and they kind of adopted Jesse because he was, um, well, he, he needed help. And, <laughs> Uh, and uh, as we got to know Jesse and as we begin to see uh, God's call manifest itself in his life, as he b really began to feel God leading him back to minister to his, the tribe that he uh, was taken from when he was a boy, uh, we formed an advisory committee to, to send Jesse back to provide some of the basic support that he needed. Um, and in 2006, he went back um, really with the, the vision of you know, kind of a 30,000-foot vision of countering hopelessness in rural Liberia, mm. uh, ministering to, to the people that he grew up with un until he was taken out of the village. Um, over the years, the, the ministry grew, and as it grew, we... Uh, felt the need to form a, a nonprofit to support that. And uh, as that happened over the last year, we changed the name uh, of the organization to Sustainable Liberia, mm. uh, where we see our, our big vision now to, to move from ashes to hope after the uh, civil war, brutal civil war in Liberia. And uh, really to building sustainability in Liberia. And um, Jesse will tell you a little bit more about <laughs> that as we talk about how the, we do the specific things, but God, God wants Jesse answered the call and went. God provided a door that uh, uh, he began to walk through. And, and you kind of serve as, uh, in a board uh, yeah, capacity? Yeah, I'm, I'm board chair, and when we formed the nonprofit, I became the uh, the board chair, and we now have a board of eight of people who love the Lord and are skilled to help do the behind-the-scenes work here in the U.S. So, Bill, for those that may be watching uh, that don't know where Liberia is, what would you tell them? If you look at West Africa, if you found the equator and you went six degrees north of the equator, Right on the little corner of, Lib of Africa, you'll find the little uh, country of Liberia with a little over four million people. Wow, wow. So Jesse, you, you became the, you, you, the catalyst, so to speak, for this group to, you, to, to rally around you, to tell you. But, but how, what is your story? What is, how is it that you grew up? How did you come to America? How, 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 what, tell us all the details of that. Gosh, God. Now, we only have 20 minutes, so. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, the short version of my story, I was born to a family of nine mothers, 26 brothers and sisters, one father. A family that is very different from the Western definition of family, but one thing I say to people is that um, I grew up in a very happy family. We did not need anybody to play with us. We could easily <laughs> break up and play soccer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Out of 26, uh, <laughs> just break up and play soccer. But my life was interrupted as a teenager. I was taken from my family and taken to Morovia. 
mm. um, to be a domestic servant, um, mm. and it was a very hard and difficult journey. I was moved from one home to another, and after the seventh home, I really grew tired, and I wanted to be myself. I wanted yeah. to be free. I wanted to go back to the family I belonged to. But uh, so I basically became a street kid, started to sleep in public areas. And it was there that a kind lady um, for me and at a hospital waiting area, and she took me into her home. And um, there I was raised. In, and our family life basically ran in a triangle from church, school, and home. Yeah. And upon graduation from high school, um, I, w I knew I wanted to go to college, but I did not have the resources, neither did the family that raised me. So um, I went to a small school, AME school, um, AME Zion School in Monrovia, and my graduation gets. I auctioned some of those and was able to pay the fees, oh, uh, wow. admission fees for my college. And I entered school the first semester with the hope that I would study hard and earn, an, uh, uh, earn a scholarship to fund my education endeavors. But uh, that dream came short because I did not have a per perfect GPA average. Mm. I fell short of few points from 4.0, so I was just devastated mm. and it was really at that point in my life I was broken and I felt gosh I cannot do it by myself and it was then really I asked Christ to come into my life and I developed my relation personal relationship with Christ and right my graduation from college really coincided with a war in Liberia the country was overtaken by gunmen um, since 1989 to 2000 uh, for the country was in war, and um, the war really got over in 2005 with the election of Madame Ellen Johnson Sirleaf, who happened to be the first female head of state in Africa oh, wow. and wow. In, in Liberia. And she did a wonderful job of reuniting the country and restoring hope to the country. But even though the guns were no longer shooting, but the economic hardship mm. was still there. People were returning from displaced camps and from refugee camps overseas and going back to Liberia with nothing to start from. And at the time I was here in the U.S. at seminary at Mercer University, uh, McAfee School of Theology, where I was able to get a seminary degree and got an MBA as well as my master's in accounting. Have, upon graduation, I found myself a job and everything was great. Got married to an American wife. So <laughs> I was on my way to achieving the American yeah, yeah. dream. But every morning as I drove from my home to my job uh, downtown, um, Atlanta or in Roswell, my second job, I kept saying to myself, gosh, God took me through a very difficult journey. Yeah. And I am fortunate to be what I am, but it also take the, it took the generosity of mm -hmm. other people who sow seeds into my life. Yeah. Am I going to be just one other African boy who came to the U.S. and had a successful life? And that, the voice kept haunting me. You have to do something. Mm. Reluctantly, I said, gosh, why would I leave? Stable employment, free society to go back to Liberia. But reluctantly, I made up my mind I was going to go back, primarily to share Christ with my people in my tribal village of Balama. And uh, secondarily, I wanted to also provide education for the boys and girls there because um, I believe education opened many doors. Mm. Mm. Now, so what is, how did, um, how did you meet Bill? I mean, obviously you're going to the church there, what Bill said, he, you're going to the church there with him. What was the connection between the two of you? When I uh, decided finally to resign my job and go to Liberia, I had just graduated seminary, did not have a whole lot of money saved. <laughs> um, I had a passion, but I did not know how everything was going to come together. Mm. And it was there, then that uh, Bill Gain, um and I, we have been going. He was a teacher of a Sunday school class that I was a part of. 
And he was one of those that asked to come alongside me, pray for me, and help mobilize the resources that I needed to go mm -hmm. back to Liberia. And since then, so what was what was the what was the what was the thing that that struck your heart, Bill, that caused? Uh, the compassion and the and even the desire to get involved with a nation uh, really kind of unbeknownst to you bef prior to this time yeah well I think the first thing was Jesse's personal passion to help his people mm -hmm. and the, the opportunity he was giving up with the sacrifice he was making in order to, to serve his own people secondly learning more about what was going on in Liberia and I think the third part of it, you know, living and worshiping in the Buckhead, Sandy Springs, North Atlanta corridor and seeing, you know, how we use our resources and seeing how poor Liberia was, uh, coming out of a financial background, y you think about the uh, what good you can do with the resources that right. are available. Right. Uh, the lives that can change, be changed, and the number of uh, saints added to the roles in heaven based upon the work that you're doing. Absolutely, um, yeah. So, you know, some of it was that business mathematical side of it, and the other side was the passion yeah. for the people. Yeah. You know, and then once you meet the people, it, it really is all about the the passion Changes and the love life, of, of Christ that yes. takes over. Yeah, yeah. So tell me about sustainable uh, Liberia. What uh, you're called to, and I heard you say this before, that mm -hmm. you're called to the rural parts of Liberia. Mm -hmm. well, and you're, you're providing education uh, on some levels. Yeah. What other things are you providing for through the organization? So sustainable Liberia has a uh, Five pillars, we call them pillars. Mm -hmm. um, they, and they include education, leadership development, economic empowerment, infrastructure advancement, and, and disciple evangelism and discipleship. Mm. The education piece is really, um, we use that as the relationship building piece because Liberia as a country really did not, especially the village that I came from, did not have the infrastructure or schools. So when we went, we started off with a school and then later the needs of the people, uh, mm -hmm. for the parents uh, for whom children we provided education, presented themselves really strong. Mm -hmm. So we started to give them little micro loans to help them start businesses. Oh, wow. We started to build infrastructures and then scholarship leaders with the hope that after our organization phase up or, or, or move to another location, the leaders will take over mm. whatever we build in their communities. Yeah, yeah. And we do it all for one reason, and that is for the sake of the gospel. Wow, wow. Mm -hmm. So what is your, what, what has been the outreach? What has been the impact that you've, uh, that you've left so far? As I said, evangelism is core. We have been able to share Christ with over seven, thousand people in the wow. villages of Balama and Bansu through Jesus Film, which is a very popular uh, medium for reaching people group who cannot read or write. Right. And we also provide access to scripture. Uh, we have been able to uh, furnish co local congregations with papyruses yeah. or torches uh, that are used for lighting and then it has a scripture on, on it. So mm. it's especially heartwarming for the local people to hear the gospel get proclaimed oh, wow. in their yeah. heart language. Wow. And uh, we have been very blessed to be yeah. a part of that ministry. That's wonderful. Yeah. Now, um, when, you, when you minister to the farmers and the, and the agriculture society, what is, what is it that you're actually doing in the agriculture society? Is it, is it just mainly the education that you're providing for them? or we, uh, One of the things, especially last year in 2017, we did was we build a cocoa processing facility in Bansu, oh, wow. um, Zota district that provides 180 farmers, cocoa farmers. Wow. Liberia was at one point in time the number one producer of cocoa beans worldwide. Wow. We lost that position to Ivory Coast and other cocoa producing regions 
And after the war, uh, we started to help farmers underbrush their farms, um, giving a little uh, seed money, a, a microloan that upon uh, harvest, they will pay back in produce. Mm. And that has been very effective. Well, why doing that? Uh, that created for us the opportunity to disciple the, farmer, wow. the farmers. Yeah. And also, we have a restaurant in Morovia um, called the Copart Queen, so <laughs> named because wow. they cook on a Copart, yeah, uh, which yeah. is a corrugated metal sheet that they put a pot on, on open fire, and they can cook and bake the <laughs> best cinnamon roll, cornbread. Oh, wait a minute. I mean, you, you just can't, everything. You can't make those claims <laughs> and not bring samples. What's the deal? You know, difficult. Uh, <laughs> I know. I, should, I wish the USDA <laughs> would let me bring that. But yeah, um, sure. besides teaching the women um, skill set, because these women are people really who want to enter the workforce, mm. but they do not have the education or the skill set to enter the workforce. Mm. So training them how to cook and bake. They are able to start businesses of their own, and we use that platform as well to disciple oh, them. Wow. So it has been um, an awesome opportunity of not just providing jobs and income mm. for hard to employ population, but also to disciple people. Bill, how, how do people uh, get involved with Sustainable Library? How, how can they support uh, the mission that you guys do? How can they be involved? Well, several ways. One, go to our website or find us on Facebook. Um, the biggest way people can support us is becoming a part of our prayer team. Uh, we send out email notifications twice a month to, to that core group of people who pray for us, our needs, and we share our praises. And then obviously, you know, financial resources. But the other thing is, uh, because of the war, because of the lack of education and for uh, the, the fact that, of the li illiteracy, having people go that have skill sets to share uh, with other people, not just to do things like vacation Bible school, even right. though there's, that's wonderful, but business people who can go and, and share their skills and knowledge with these people who haven't had that kind of opportunity, teachers who can go and train teachers there and, and we then begin to provide some, what we'd call it, infrastructure to the, to the system. Sure. Uh, sure. And, and also those who want to go and share the gospel and, and really build relationships with the, the chief and the elders and the women oh, wow. in the village. That's great. Dr. Jesse? Thank you for being with us, Bill. Thank you, thank thank you for being with us tonight. Thanks for it's been you. awesome.